All right, so now we're gonna be covering these buttons right here, like the record, the pause, the play, the stop, etc. How do you get all of these set up? Well, it's actually a little bit easier than you think, but unless you happen to know where to go, well, it's almost impossible. What you need to do is click on the actions button up here and then show actions list. This is a list of everything that you can set something to. So there's just so many things here. You obviously have to filter it. So what you're going to want to do is look up transport. And then what you want. So let's say transport play. All right, so here is transport play. So all that you do is with this highlighted, click add down here in the in the shortcuts for selection. Sorry, in, in the shortcuts for selected action, click add. And then simply tap the button or control you want. In this case, we're going to tap this button. You press OK, and now it works. And you do that the same for everything. So let's say uh, pause, which is right there, so no need to look it up. Add. And you press the pause button, and it works. Oh, and also sometimes, like, you may have noticed that I press pause and it puts the thing there but keeps on going. What you need to do is in the add thing, after you press the button, um, move it to relative. And now it'll work better. And so on and so forth with all of these buttons. For record, you simply find record, add, press record. And if it doesn't happen to act quite like you want, simply make it relative. And that's that. That is how you get all of these buttons to work. All right, so now let's talk about the faders and the knobs. Let's say that you want the faders to be assigned to the tracks. What you're going to want to look up is uh, track, sorry, I have my um, typing keyboard behind my MIDI keyboard so it's uh, a bit clumsy to type right now. So uh, track set volume. Y you could also set like um, pan for an example by looking that up if you want to do that. But in this case, we're looking up volume. So let's set the volume for track two with this second one right here. All right, so all you do Wait, uh, yeah, so all you do is you click add and you simply move around what you want. Um, maybe I shouldn't have had that, um, maybe I want that an absolute. Yeah, there we go, and I guess make sure it's on absolute, because if it's not, it's going to be all wonky. And then you do that for all of these things. The way that I actually have it set up is, um, kind of interesting. You may see up here, set, um, set volume for selected tracks. I have that set to the knob right here. So what that means is it'll move the track that is selected. And I personally find that to be really, really useful. That means opposed to just clicking on it, then adjusting it with both my mouse, all I do is I click on it and I move this knob and it's, it's easy. I love it. And you can do all sorts of stuff like that. So that's how you set all of the faders and knobs. But what if you want to set them to a virtual instrument? Well, that's where the actions menu will fail you. 
What you need to do to set it to a virtual instrument, I'm going to open up a virtual instrument. Huh. Forefront R piano. It, it's a free virtual instrument that sounds really nice. But let, let's say that I just have to have the dynamic set to its own knob. You have to go to the envelopes for that. So you click on this button right here. And you see the forefront R piano settings. All of these settings are things you can set to a knob or a fader or something. So all that you do is you click the learn button. So let's see, I'm looking for, huh. How about drive cutoff? So I press learn and it brings up that familiar screen. So all that you do Let's use this knob right here. Is you twiddle around that knob. Okay. And now it works. I am now controlling the drive forefront piano simply with my knob. And for a better visual cue of this, what you can do is click on the UI button right here. So even if you have the interface closed, you can still see that you are in fact moving it. Alright, so on top of drive cutoff, I want regular drive. What you can also do is after clicking on the UI to appear here, you right click on that, click on learn, go through the process again, and all is well. So that's everything now. So now, simply with the controls built into Reaper, without the need for the APRO editor, you have what you need to completely set up this keyboard, or really any MIDI keyboard, inside of Reaper. So I hope you found this useful, and if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe, and check out my Bandcamp and my SoundCloud. So with that, I hope you have a great day.